Good evening. Very warm and sincere welcome to everyone. So good to see you. It's also good to see visitors with us today again. You're welcome at St. John's anytime. If there's anything you'd like to ask about, please do so after as you meet me. Or you can give me a call or message me or text me, email me, whatever it takes. We want to serve and serve well. Welcome also to those that are worshiping online. It's good to be able to get out to the world with the gospel message of Christ. For those on the radio, I'm Pastor Timothy Miller, and I will be conducting the liturgy and preaching the sermon this evening. You saw before a sheep grazing. What a wonderful banquet it was enjoying. It also had some in its mouth. And so today, the 21st weekend after Pentecost, we have the theme, God's Banquet for His Sheep. Please, after worship, take time to talk about the readings, the sermon, or anything else from the service so that you can encourage one another, help each other, and also lead each other to apply the Word of God in your everyday lives. Let's open our worship by singing hymn number 259, When All Your Mercies, O oh My God. Please stand. Our thanks to all of those that have done so much to make sure that this worship service continues. We thank Mary Warnicke for being our organist this evening. Our worship for today is the common service in the front of the hymnal beginning on page 15. We worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God our Father, asking Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed You in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins, and trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. Merciful to us and has given his only son to be 
the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ, and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In the peace of forgiveness, let us praise the Lord. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Grant, O merciful Lord, to your faithful people pardon and peace, that they may be cleansed from all their sins and serve you with a quiet mind. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated. The Old Testament lesson is taken from Isaiah chapter 25, beginning with verse 6. You'll note how it fits in beautifully with the theme for today, God's banquet for his sheep, as it talks about a feast of rich foods, and how we are to rejoice and be glad about that salvation that we have from God. On this mountain, the Lord Almighty will prepare a feast of rich food for all peoples, a banquet of aged wine, the best of meats and the finest of wines. On this mountain, he will destroy the shroud that enfolds all people, the sheet that covers all nations. He will swallow up death forever. The sovereign Lord will wipe away the tears from all faces. He will remove the disgrace of his people from all the earth. The Lord has spoken. In that day they will say, surely this is our God. We trusted in him and he saved us. This is the Lord. We trusted in him. Let us rejoice and be glad in his salvation. And this is the word of our Lord. The psalm for this day, of course, fits as well. Instead of choosing a psalm in the front of the hymnal, I'm taking it from the hymn section. Let us sing together hymn number 375. It's Psalm 23. The King of Love, my shepherd is.
Our second lesson is taken from Philippians chapter 4, beginning with verse 4. Through the song that we just sang, which reflected the thoughts of Psalm 23, we have now been set before the banquet of our Lord. We heard of so many gifts from him through Psalm 23. This serves as the sermon text. Many sermons could be preached on just this section from Philippians. There's so much in here, so many gifts from our Lord God. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice. And the God of peace will be with you. I rejoice greatly in the Lord that at last you have renewed your concern for me. Indeed, you have been concerned, but you had no opportunity to show it. I am not saying this because I am in need, for I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do everything through him who gives me strength. And this is the word of our Lord. The verse of the day. Alleluia. This is the Lord. We trusted in him. Let us rejoice and be glad in his salvation. Alleluia. Please stand for the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel is written in the Gospel of St. Matthew, the 22nd chapter, beginning with verse 1. Once again, it reminds us of that banquet of fine foods, the banquet of God's gifts. God invites us to come. He says, come. We never want to reject his call. Jesus spoke to them again in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a king who prepared a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his servants to those who had been invited to the banquet to tell them to come, but they refused to come. Then he sent some more servants and said, Tell those who have been invited that I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and fat, fattened cattle have been butchered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they paid no attention and went off, one to his field, another to his business. The rest seized his servants, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged. He sent his army and destroyed those murderers and burned their city. Then he said to his servants, The wedding banquet is ready, but those I invited did not deserve to come. Go to the street corners and invite to the banquet anyone you find. So the servants went out into the streets and gathered all the people they could find, both good and bad, and the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he noticed a man there who was not wearing wedding clothes. Friend, he asked, how did you get in here without wedding clothes? The man was speechless. Then the king told the attendants, tie him hand and foot, throw him outside into the darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are invited, but few are chosen. And this is the gospel of our Lord. We confess our faith together with the whole Christian church on earth using the words of the Apostles' Creed. 
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Our worship continues as we sing hymn number 376, verses 1 through 3, Jesus, your blood and righteousness. Grace and peace be to you from God our Father, and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear fellow redeemed, I'd like you to imagine that this is your heart. And what is in your heart? For us to answer that, we need to go way back to the beginning of your life, from conception. And what does the Bible say? about what is in each and every heart. It says that there is sin there. We read from Romans 7, I know that nothing good lives in me, Paul says, that is in my sinful nature. For I have the desire to do what is good, but I cannot carry it out. What's in your heart by nature is sin. And you know that it's there you know that it's there. On this sheet, I have some words describing what's in all of our hearts. Sin. We have in our hearts selfishness and hate and meanness, envy, sinful pride, laziness, sinful lust, greed, disrespect of God, His Word, and other people, and we could go on. That's what's in our hearts. But I have wonderful and great news for you. I'm able to share with you that there is forgiveness in Christ Jesus. Through his blood shed on the cross, every single sin has been paid for, including all of these that I've mentioned, these sins of the heart all paid for. He redeemed every part of you, body, soul, and mind. His purity 
The keeping of all of the commandments is yours as a free gift, and through him you are righteous and pure in God's eyes. He redeemed you from sin, death, and the devil. That has bought you back from all of that. Where would we be but lost if it weren't for our Savior Jesus Christ, if it weren't for the grace of God? And so begins the banquet of God's gifts. And we're going to take a look, first of all, at his promises and power. And then we'll take a look at God's will for us. So the banquet of God's gifts. We'll put that into our hearts as well. God has put it in there. He's the originator of our Savior, Jesus. He paid for our sins. He purified us with his blood. He redeemed us, and he gives that to us as a free gift. What else do we have from our Lord God? Well, let's go back. Let's go back now to the beginning of your life in Christ. Let's go back to when the Holy Spirit brought you to faith. You see, faith too originates from God. Not from you, but from God. He's the giver of faith. The Holy Spirit caused you to be born again. You were born into sin, and then you were born into God's kingdom by water and the word, holy baptism, strengthening your faith through that same Holy Spirit, through the power of the gospel. He has enlightened you brought you to see things differently because now you are God's child. As we study this text, we just see all of the gifts that our Lord God pours out on us. Gifts galore. It begins, the Lord is near. There we're talking about the Lord and his coming being near. There's a promise found here, and that promise is what Jesus gave when he said that he's going to come back and take us to be with him where he is. That promise drives every day of our lives. If we believed that there was nothing after death, if we believed that the Lord is not coming back, if we didn't believe God's promise, what would we live for? What purpose would we have? Where would we be going? But with heaven in mind, with being with our Lord Jesus in mind, that drives our everyday life. We live each day for him. The Lord is near. And then it moves on to peace. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. And then just a little later on in the text, it says, and the God of peace will be with you. Again, this is peace that originates from God. It comes from God. It's the peace that he gives us. It transcends all understanding. Who can grasp that? That when we were sinners, while we were sinners, while we were God's enemies, Jesus died for us. That's grace. That's the love of God that we didn't deserve. That tr transcends all understanding. It's that awesome. It's that amazing. It's that wonderful. The, this is a peace that holds us to Christ. Nothing can dislodge us from this peace as it depends on God's promise. It's a wonderful gift. And it also puts peace in our hearts, leads us to live in peace. This is the peace that comes because Christ sacrificed himself in our place. And now instead of enemies, we are friends with God, at peace with God. Not because of anything we did, but what Christ did for us. And the God of peace will be with you. And then he moves on. He says, I've learned the secret. The secret. I've learned the secret of being content in any and every situation. What's that secret? Christ. That's the secret. And God wants us to share that secret from the mountaintops with the world. 
Christ is the secret. Christ made the promise that he's with us always to the very end of the age. He is the one who has said that he'll never leave us nor forsake us. He is with us always. And his promises piled up on each other. Oh, there we have the secret to being content. Whether we have much or little. And then it goes on. I can do everything through him who gives me strength. The Lord Jesus gives us strength. I remember a Bible passage where it says, If God is for us, who can be against us? The whole world can be against us. But if God is for us, that's all that we need. And yes, he is for us. But where's the proof? On the cross. Jesus hanging there in your place. He demonstrated his love for you. He has given you strength. He's the one who is for you. You know, this particular passage hangs in many Christian homes. And why is that? That's because they know. They know they can't cope. They can't go on in life without the strength that God gives in Christ Jesus. And so they want to be reminded. You want to be reminded constantly of this. I can do everything through him, through Christ, who gives me strength. Oh, what blessings. It's a banquet table, isn't it? And God has so many wonderful gifts. It's, it's like water coming down from a waterfall and just... Covering you completely with the gifts of God. We're going to go on after a, a, a hymn here that we're going to sing now. We're going to take a break. And then we're going to take a look at God's banquet of gifts as to God's will for us. Let's sing then those verses of the hymn that finish with this part one. We sing again hymn number 376 verses 4 through 6. Thank you. banquet of God's gifts. And so we've seen what we have by the promises and power of our Lord God. Faith, born again in Christ, it says on here, the Lord is near. Peace of God and God of peace. God's promises, the secret of contentment, and God's promise and gift of salvation he puts into our hearts. And this changes us. This makes a difference in our hearts, in our minds, and in our lives. It causes us to think differently. In Romans chapter 12, Paul wrote by inspiration, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So God changes our thinking. You see, 
you're no longer controlled by all of these. God has put Christ into your heart and all of those wonderful gifts that we have talked about so far. All of this, all these sins, overcome, beaten, crushed. Jesus did that. Yes, they're still in our hearts, but they do not control us. They're not our master. Christ is our Lord and our master. And so we go on and we see how he has made this shift for us. This shift from those that were lost to those that are found. Those condemned to those now on their way to heaven. Paul now gets into some details as far as the will of God for us. And they're all blessings. They're all gifts on God's banquet table. He says, rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. There we have joy that comes from the gospel. This is a joy that surpasses all emotions. It includes emotions, but this is a joy that comes from the gospel of Christ. This is a joy that depends on God's promises. This is a joy that is there in the heart even when there's trouble and difficulty and hardship, when maybe one loses his or her job or there's financial dif difficulty, or there's pain, or sickness, or death. This is a joy that continues throughout all of it. This is a joy that comes from our Lord God. Remember that the Apostle Paul is in chains here, imprisoned. And he's talking about a song in his heart, a joy on his lips, the joy that the Holy Spirit gives to his people. And then it goes on, let your gentleness be evident to all. This is big heartedness. This is where you choose to suffer harm rather than to inflict harm. It's where you help the helpless, the lonely, and the hurting, the weak. It's gentle treatment for someone. Let your gentleness be evident to all. It extends to all people. It yields to all. It's a gentleness that God gives, that he puts into our hearts. Do not be anxious about anything. Here, God is talking about the calmness that he gives us as we heard his promises. It's a calmness of faith. It's a serenity that comes because of God's wonderful promises, where we know he's with us. Those things that we can't control, we put into God's hand and God's direction. We know he's with us every day. Do not be anxious about anything. And it continues, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. Another wonderful gift, prayer. It's a privilege, dear friends, to talk to our loving Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And it is to be Prayer that has thanksgiving as part of it. Prayer without thanksgiving is like a bird without wings. It has a great deal of trouble flying upward. Remember to have thanksgiving in all of your prayers. And then there's a list that is here. It's a list that we're going to see belongs together. Whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent and praiseworthy, think about such things. So we take just a moment to look at each one. But before we do, know this, that they're all joined together. They're all built on one another. They depend on each other. They speak in many ways of the same thing. It says, whatever is true. Well, there we're taken to the scriptures because we know that that is true, absolutely true. It's God's word. And God wants us to think of those things. Remember what it said at the end of the list? Think about such things. We're talking about your thoughts now. May your thoughts be that which is true, the genuine item, the real product, the word of God. Not the filthy garbage that comes from many books or video games or movies or whatever it might be, but from God himself. 
whatever is true, whatever is noble. Oh, we're talking there about that which is worthy of respect. That which is not shameful or disreputable, but that which is noble. Then it goes on, whatever is right. Whatever is right. That is, whatever is just, whatever is correct, whatever is right in the sight of God, whatever is pleasing to God. Avoiding that which is crooked or out of line. Whatever is pure. And whatever is lovely. Here we're talking about things thinking of things that are wholesome and beautiful and that are appealing and pleasing to our Lord God. Whatever is admirable, that is of good report or commendable, spoken well of. Again, that which is pleasing to our Lord God. Do you see the gifts? Oh, the gifts are so many that are piled up one on top of one another. It's like we're sheep and we're grazing in a wonderful field, a luscious field. It's a banquet before us. And then Paul adds, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. There are a lot of things that we could be filling our minds with, but most we want to avoid. We want the Lord God to fill our minds with his truths with that which is excellent and praiseworthy. Many things of virtue, many things that are praiseworthy. Fill your mind with that which is pleasing to God. And then it says, whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, Paul says, put it into practice. There we have the example of Christians who have gone before or who are in our lives right now. Those are gifts from God. He wants you to imitate the faith, to put into practice what they have learned from God's Word. As you imitate them and put that into practice, you live your life with them also in mind and what God has done for them. Paul says, you have renewed your concern for me. Indeed, you have been concerned, but you had no opportunity to show it. Here, he is talking about how he appreciates the concern of the Philippians for him. Your pastors, your staff, we all appreciate the concern that you have for us. Your encouragement, your love, your generosity. Oh, how we appreciate that. And you do give it. And we want to thank you so much for that. And so concern for one another. That's another gift that our Lord puts into our hearts and finally, he says, I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. Here we have contentment. We talked about the secret of it before. Now we're talking about the gift of contentment. Whether we have much or little, doesn't matter. Because the Lord has given us, he has placed into our hearts contentment knowing that he is with us. How is it that we can have all of these wonderful gifts? Oh, not by our power. They all originate from our gracious Lord God. You know, you hear positive thinkers talking on TV or wherever saying, it's up to you, think positively. You need to be an optimist. You can do it. The strength lies within you. Oh, that falls flat. It's got no power. The power is in Christ. And our Lord God has given you Christ. The, different here, the difference here is that you are connected to the power source. You are connected to Christ. You are a recipient of all of his gifts. Joy, gentleness, calmness from anxiety, prayer, thanksgiving, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, anything excellent or praiseworthy, putting God's word and examples into practice, concern for each other, contentment, all from our Lord God on the banquet table for you. 
God is a God of love. And I end this sermon the same way I end most of my sermons. It really sums it up well because it reminds us of our Lord God and his grace and how he puts into our hearts all of these gifts. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. What we'll do at this time is think about giving our offerings to our Lord. It's usually at this time that we pass the offering baskets. Because of the virus, we're not doing that. But please know that you can give. If you brought a gift, place it in the slotted cabinets at the entrance there, in the slotted box over here. Or you have other ways you can give as well, as indicated on the screen. They all come from our heart, don't they? It's a gift, isn't it? It's a gift to give and to give generously and to give willingly because we love our Lord God. So we continue our worship as we sing the offering hymn, hymn number 488. It also flows well from our text. Savior, thy dying love. As we go to our Lord in prayer, we pray for Nathan Sewer, who is hospitalized. And we also give thanks to our Lord for the successful brain surgery of Brady, that is Kathy Huggett's nephew. Please stand for prayer. Dear Savior, thank you for conquering sin for us. It continues to be within us, but beaten by you as your blood paid the price for our redemption. Thank you, dear Holy Spirit, for giving us faith, causing us to be born again into your family with a desire to please you. Thank you, dear Father, for the banquet of gifts you give us day after day. Forgive us for our Savior's sake when we have filled our minds with that which is shameful and sinful and against your will. 
Fill our minds with that which is pleasing and right. Guard our hearts and minds with the peace that transcends all understanding and continue to give us strength to do all things to your glory. And dear Lord, you are the physician of both body and soul. Thank you for taking care of Brady through brain surgery. Thank you for blessing the surgery and the care given by all those involved. With you, all things are possible. Continue to bless Brady and body and soul as you use the recovery to honor you. Give you all glory and through faith be prepared for eternal life in heaven. Comfort the family with your sure and eternal promises. Merciful God, be with Nathan Sewer. Be his shield and strength. Use this occasion to purify and strengthen his faith. The good work that you have begun in him, keep to the very end. Let him never lose sight of you as his loving, merciful God, who is his ever-present help in time of need, and to whom he may go in the day of trouble for deliverance. Lord, you have the power to make well. If it is your will, do so. According to your compassion and loving kindness, give rest to Nathan's body. Above all, console him with the peace which transcends all understanding. Peace that comes from sins forgiven and hope of heaven. In our Savior's name we also pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Blessed Lord, you have given us your holy scriptures for our learning. May we so hear them, read, learn, and take them to heart that being strengthened and comforted by your holy word, we may cling to the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Please be seated. Having enjoyed that banquet of fine foods, the blessings from our Lord God, we close our worship as we sing hymn number 610, Now Thank We All Our God.
Once again, so good to see all of you. I have a few announcements, but I would encourage you to read all of the announcements in the worship folder. We have many details there. But I would like to stress a few, such as the Bible classes that are all available on Sunday morning in between the services from about 9 to 10 o'clock. We have a wonderful Bible class that is ending now. Politics is driving me crazy, and we have been looking at Scripture and how we can live as God's people in this world. And then during November and December, Professor Kobleski will conduct a series titled The Christian's Heart and God's Law. Again, that's on Sunday mornings. There's also a Bible class on Wednesday morning at 10 o'clock, every Wednesday, and a women's Bible study. And that there will be one this coming, this next Wednesday, 6.30 p.m. over at school. I believe that's the second and fourth Wednesdays of each month. And mixed choir is being held on Tuesdays beginning at 6.30, and I believe that's in the school music room, and they're always looking for new faces and new voices. So once again, a choir for anyone who'd like to attend. Also, in regard to Bible class, we're holding a Bible class every Wednesday at 6 o'clock. It's short. It's maybe 15 to 20 minutes, and it's online. It's a Zoom Bible class. You have the details in your bulletin. All you have to do is just go use your browser. Uh, just simply go to uh, what is in your bulletin there, and you'll be able to get on and study with us. Just a couple of clicks, and you're there. A stewardship committee meeting, and we're looking for more to be added to that group, is forming, and we'll meet on Wednesday, November 4th at 6.30. Wednesday, November 4th at 6.30. We ask anyone who can help clean and sanitize, especially the handrails after service today, in order to get ready for the services uh, tomorrow. Uh, we would really appreciate that. And of course, thank you for all your cooperation uh, in regard to the safety guidelines that we follow. There is a door offering after church today, and that is going to go to the live nativity. They are going to have it this year. You know what a live nativity is? It's depicting Christ's birth with live people and live animals. We want to thank those that were here this morning and did so much gardening. It really looks beautiful outside. Thank you for your loving service. And finally, we're going to watch the next uh, segment of the Marriage Moments. You know that it's only a minute or two long. And so before that, just to share with you, remember always God's banquet that he sets before us with all those wonderful gifts. Let's watch the Marriage Moment. Hello, and welcome to Marriage Moments. When God created man and woman, in the Hebrew, the word that's used for create is bara. It's a word that's used for things only God can do. So whenever the word bara is used, the idea that's there is that this is something epic. And in Genesis chapter 1, verse 27, that word bara occurs three times. That God is saying, this is epic, epic epic. Why? Because God had created us humans. And along with it, he had created marriage. Husbands and wives, know that you are the epic of all God's epics. You are the crown of his creation. Husbands, talk to your wife that way. See her that way. Wives, treat your husband that way. Talk to him that way. As you do, your marriage will be blessed. And that's a moment for your marriage.